Six eight two one nine. Six eight two one nine. Look, if you don't want to speak, just whistle it. It's costing you money. What number is that? What number do you want? Is that 68217? I seem to have the wrong number. Yes. I'm sorry. So am I. Closed. Sorry. I won't keep you long. Will it wait until the morning? Just it won't be here. It is business, is it? Please. Oh, well, if it's all that early. If you don't. Not at all, not at all. Sorry. No, no, excuse me. I did phone. Oh, yeah. Which is how I knew you were still here. Mr. Um... Barrett. Sit down, Mr. Barrett. Thank you. I'm off again tomorrow, you see. When? First thing in the morning. No, when did you phone? Oh. Yes. You said you phoned. About half an hour ago, on the off chance. But we didn't speak. Uh, no. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. No, the the line was engaged. Ah, I see. I, I can give you the time almost exactly. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. The train came in at 8.35, say, what, 10 minutes to get to a box, find your number. So that's, what, 8.45? Yes, 8.45, give or take. Mr. Just... Barrett. Mr. Barrett, it doesn't really matter. Yes. Yes, of course. Sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. The thing is, you see, I do like to be exact, if I can. It's one of my habits. Faults. I say faults because I know it irritates people, some people. I seem to have caught you in the middle of something. What? Oh, yeah, uh, getting all the bumps together, you know, tax man. Oh, yes. You're not him, are you? Me? Oh, oh good Lord, no. <laughs> no, you never know.
We didn't speak, did we, before? No. I mean, somebody did phone about that time, wrong number, not you? I would have said. Mm, uh, I didn't believe him anyway. Half the time I answer that thing is a waste of effort. I've given up wondering why people do it. They do it. It gets on my nerves. Put your phone number in the local paper. You see what I mean? Oh, dear. What? You'll make me feel as though I'm wasting your time. I'm sorry. Well, I hope you're not. Want a cup of coffee? No trouble I'm having one. Thank you. Matter of fact, I haven't spoken to a soul all day. Well, not what directly, not what you call a conversation, you know. If you hadn't knocked on that door, I'd probably have gone home, gone straight to bed. Does it worry you? I'm just aware of it. I wouldn't have thought you were the sort. No, I'm not. You, you live alone? Mm -hmm. No wife? Mm -mm. But it could be worse. Oh, don't I know it. <laughs> Imagine going home to a wife and still not talking, having nothing to say. So I'm married. I checked with the operator. I'm sorry? When I telephoned. Oh, the operator, yes, yes. When I got the engaged signal, I tried several times, you see. I thought the line might be out of order, but no, they said you were definitely engaged talking. Uh -huh. So you just uh, came round? Yes, yes, I, I came round on the off chance, and when I saw your light was on... Your sugar? Please. Two? One and a half. Well, thank you. I suppose in your line of business, the hours are rather irregular. There is. 24 hours a day? Oh, nothing like. In theory, I mean dealing with people. People sleep. Inquiry agents? <laughs> Just a rumour. Us not being people. I'd like to lock that door at six o'clock sharp from the outside. Yes, but I imagine you must get some inquiries at odd hours. Not once I've left this office. You mean if people phone? I'm not here. No answering service? No need. Oh, now I would have... The way I see it, Mr Barrett, if it's really urgent, they'll use one of the big organisations, and if it's not, they'll phone again in the morning. So much... Ah, but you're going away in the morning. Yes. Yes, I'm... I'm going away. Is there something you wanted me to do for you? Oh, sorry. Yes. You know, now I'm here. You know where to start? Yes, I... I worked it all out, sort of speech. Well, let me guess. Wife trouble. Is it that obvious? It's often the hardest thing to admit. Admit? To talk about, in my experience. Pride. Possibly. You don't care. I don't think about it. You see, to a lot of men, a wife, a family, they're the only things he's got. Uh, I mean, finally, uh, I mean, if he's not... But if he's work, then all he has left is his family. If you destroy that, if he destroys it... Another man? Uh, as they say. Are you positive? Well, without actually... Yes. Have you talked it over with her, your wife? No. Oh, it might be a lot easier. Cheaper, if you did. Uh, why must you always... Always what? But you somehow words like cheaper. Uh, not always. I'm sorry. If I check on your wife and find something positive, what will you do? Well, that's up to me, Shirley. Oh, you alone. But once the ball starts rolling, it's often hard, sometimes impossible to stop it. And you're not the only one pushing it. Yes, yes, I know that. Or say I spend three days and draw a blank. I can't guarantee results. Now, three days at 6.50 a day works out at what? Just under 20 quid to me. That's not cheap. Does that matter to you? To me, personally, it doesn't matter a damn. You'll need to take some notes. Yeah. I suppose you open a file. Something like that. I wonder how many marriages end up like this, notes on a file. Yeah. I wonder. Right. Just so many statistics. Name, full name. Philip Raymond Barrett. Two T's. Uh, yes, and two R's. Home address? 84 Kings Avenue. Oh, you live in Windsor? Oh, yes. Oh. Wife's name? Rose. Alice Rose. She prefers to be called Rose. I'll need a photograph. Uh, yes, of course. Oh, you brought one? Well, I... Oh, good. Is this recent? A few months. It's a good likeness, as they say. She's a little younger than I am. Very attractive. Very. We've been married 12 years. Right. Tell me about this man. What about him? Well, how you know? They were seen together by someone. Oh. I'd rather not say. All right. Where? 
At the house. At your house? He goes there. Regularly? So it seems when I'm away. Oh, how often is that? Once a week, sometimes more. A bit chancy, I would have thought. But, uh, sorry? Well, going to the house. Small street like that, bound to be seen. He was. I never thought of actually um, catching them myself. Thought of it, yes, but I couldn't face it. Oh, you'll have to face it if I find something positive. Well, there is here. a difference. <laughs> if there wasn't, I'd be out of work most of the time. Do you believe in capital punishment? Eh? Hey? In hanging. Mr. Blair. There, there is a connection. Yes, sir. The solving of conscience. The executioner paid to do his public duty in private. No, but he's not anymore. Better if he did, do you think? And you're away again tomorrow? Sorry, yes. Tomorrow. I um, assume, uh, presume, she telephones him, tells him the coast is clear, as they say. Right, I'll watch tomorrow, see when he turns up. If he does turn up, what time he leaves, anything else I might have seen in the time. You won't actually... Catch them in the act, as they say, no. I thought that was the... One home. thing at a time, fair enough. First, verify my suspicions. Right. And then? Well, and then, if you want to take it further, we go for positive evidence. Evidence will stand up in a divorce court. That means bringing in a solicitor. When you say positive evidence... Well, you know what I mean. Peering through windows. Oh, sometimes even a ladder. Taking photographs. No photographs. Really? No need. They trust your word. Most of the time. Most? Long story. But it is your word. Evidence. So, in fact, you could make it all up. Say whatever you liked. But why would I do that? Because I, I, someone in my position might persuade you. You want me to carry out these inquiries? Yes. Right, I've got all the information I need. Good night, Mr. Barrett. You haven't answered my question. I think I have. You, someone in your position, could stand up in court and say what he liked. Oh, yes, of course. Lovely. And what happens when someone denies the allegation? No, you misunderstand. What if they don't want to, to deny it, the allegation? But if they're not going to deny adultery, why waste a lot of time getting evidence to prove it? No, you it? don't see my point. Yeah, well, I always get a bit mussy this time no, of I'm night. being serious. Mr. Barrett, it's late. Do you or do you not see my point? I think you'd better take your problem somewhere else. No, it's you I want, Mr. Marker. You. Mr. Frank Marker, confidential inquiry agent, now of Eaton and Windsor, formerly of Brighton. You've done some homework. Stupid not to. Yes, well, I'll let you know. No? What I find out. I'd like to talk about it. We have to. More fully. Not tonight. Look, what, what will you do? If I leave, you'll go home to bed. You said it yourself. Surely you can spare me an hour, half an hour? Next time, Ron. No. I do have a reason. Oh, I'm sure you have. You see, tomorrow I might be dead. Yes, well, we all have the same problem. Problem? Chance. Sorry, you misunderstand. I'll rephrase it. Tomorrow, I might kill myself. Talk. I once had to make a speech in public. Oh, yeah. It's a business affair, nothing serious, but I wasn't expecting it. Suddenly I was on my feet and they were all looking at me. It wasn't, I didn't say enough. I said too much. I was seized with total panic. I remember all those faces looking at me, tolerance, then boredom, and then as I went, on and on, utter amazement, even fear. Finally, someone physically sat me down, physically pulled me. Total silence. That was God knows how many years ago, and still I wake up in the night, wringing with sweat at the thought of it. Now, why should that have had such an effect on me? Mm, nothing very unusual. No, I don't suggest it is. I think you'll find that most people Perhaps have... skeletons mm -hmm. in the cupboard. Of a sort. But such small, insignificant ones, so unimportant, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Apparently not. 
You, on the other hand, must be quite used to it. I don't make speeches in public. You stand up in court. When necessary. I, I was on a jury once, jury service, and, and the one thing that struck me most forcibly was the, the imbalance of it all. Imbalance? For those who are trained for the occasion and those who are not, and very often those who aren't, have the most to lose, don't you agree? Do you know, and how often does a man understand. such as myself appear in a courtroom? And how often a man like you, only to you, it's a matter of course. To me, a, a nerve-wracking experience, perhaps. Well, from what you've just said, terrifying. Terrifying. And put side by side, whose evidence would carry the most weight, yours or mine? Well, they have a habit of sifting out the truth. You think so? Well, I depend upon it, so should you. Innocent men have hanged. Right. It's saying what you want to say, but never in the right way. Practice. Yes. Yeah, but not on me, please. No, I realize now that I was brought up in a home without conversation. People said things, but they never held a conversation. Looking back, I, I realized my, my father was a man totally devoid of opinion. I, I grew up in a, a vacuum, a, a, a totally sterile vacuum. And how can I be expected to give any, anything to anybody? <laughs> What the hell are you going on about? Do you know I'm a mug? I'm just beginning to get your number. Sorry, I don't, don't quite follow. I mean, I think you should take your problem somewhere else. We are telling me to go. Ask him. We were talking. No, you were talking. But I would have thought in your profession. My job? You would have thought what? Well, listening, sorry. I listen when it's relevant. I don't think it's relevant. I think that you should take another look in the yellow pages and this time try another heading. But I asked you to do something for me. Look, perhaps you didn't hear. I've just turned you down. Sorry. You can do that. Nothing to say I can't. I see. I hope you do. You think I'm wasting your time? I know you are. You've suddenly decided well, I'm... Not suddenly, it's been growing on you me. You think I knocked on that door well, simply... Maybe you just saw the light on and fancied a bit of a chance. You're quite wrong. Let's not bother with an alternative. All right, I lied to you. I made up that story about my wife because I wanted to speak to you. Good night. I wanted to sit in a room and talk to you to satisfy myself with the sort of man you are. Oh, go home, will you, Mr. Barrett? Clemens. What? Not, not Barrett, Clemens. I take it that's supposed to mean something. <laughs> not to you. Not a thing. That's it, you see. That's why I wanted to make quite sure I'd mean nothing to you. Me, not the name me, but then why should I? There are millions of people like me, the nine-to-five commuters, the Sunday car polishers, the people you only hear about in a joke, the nothing. Oh, come on now. Oh, I wish I knew what it was you wanted. Call the police. Why don't you go home? I've had just about enough of you. You smug little swine. I'd punch you in the face. Oh, if that's what you want, go ahead. Do it. Is that all you wanted? Punch someone in the face? Someone to take it out on, whatever it is. Is that what you wanted? No, not someone. But perhaps you've seen me sitting here on your way home. Didn't like the look of my face and said to yourself, one of these days I'll go in and take a crack at it. Well, go on, help yourself. I don't like it much more than you do. Great, isn't it? Look at this. A couple of kids. But I'm sorry. Sorry. I lost no, my temper. No, just I'm... keep your mouth shut, will you? Do you want some more coffee? Please. Well, sit down, for God's sake. I ought to kick you down the street, you know that, don't you? Then why don't you? <laughs> Clemens? Yes. Well, all right, I'll tell you, Mr. Clemens, there's something about you. The minute you walk through that door, put me on edge, and I don't like it. You're not just some chutney, hateney, crank, or whiling away a boring half hour. It's me, what not it? Me in particular. But well, I want to know why. From what you said earlier, I wouldn't have thought you cared. When it concerns me, I care. 
You asked if we'd met before. Nothing personal. I've got a short memory. I'm not the memorable type. Don't you break my furniture, now you're breaking my heart. Please, and don't say sorry. Yes. Yes, we met. I suppose that's the word. For not more than half an hour. I doubt if we exchanged a handful of words. When was it? October the 12th, 1967. We're going back. Who? Oh. No. You were retained, is that the right word? It'll do. By Heller and Griffith, the solicitors. Uh, on your behalf? On behalf of my wife. Not that you've met her, that of course wouldn't be necessary. Divorce case? Well, same story, different date, that's all. I was to supply the evidence, you were to collect it. Well, I'd like to say it was all coming back, but honestly... I didn't expect it to. Then what is your problem? Would you have it on record? In a file somewhere. Would you look it out for me? It's important. Philip Raymond Clemens, 32 Russell Road, Hove. The woman was a Laura... Lorna? Hamilton? Laura. It doesn't matter. I called at the house, asked all the usual questions. I, we answered with what are supposedly the usual lies. I just write down what I'm told. Particularly in a case like this. Like what? Where everything's been arranged. They like me to go through the motions. You did, just. It's what we call a minor operation. In, out, very little blood. Hardly worth a visit. Appearances. You could have posted me a questionnaire. I'd filled in the answers. When we're all showing our hands, there's not much point in cheating. You think there was no cheating? You and your wife wanted a divorce, right? Yes. To get a divorce in those days, you needed evidence, right? Yes. You agreed to supply that evidence. Nobody twisted your arm. Right? Thank you. You don't think there are ways of twisting one In a case like this, I see what I'm meant to see, what I'm told to see. I oil the wheels. I make it easy. For your benefit, not mine. We agreed, my wife. But in view of what was happening, a divorce was the only answer. Better for us, better for the children, in particular the children. I agreed to be the offending party. It seemed the decent thing to do. You know, I, I had no idea how easy the, that sort of thing was to arrange. A discreet telephone call from someone to a friend of a friend of a friend, and there she was. Miss Hamilton, another character in the charade. The professional correspondent. Thirty pounds in cash, darling. I wonder what she does for a crust now. Yeah, I was to be at a certain address at a certain time. The rest would be taken care of. Actually, she made it very easy for me. I arrived at her flat at ten o'clock. You were due to arrive any time after that. It was a very cold night. The only warm place was the kitchen. We drank coffee out of Woolworth mugs. I suppose she wasn't much more than 20. I might have been just passing time with her. No mention was made of my reason for being there. But I... I began to feel a strange... a sexual excitement. I, I made some sort of joke about the atmosphere being domestic rather than adulterous, and shouldn't I at least take my coat off? She said not to worry. I'd probably turn up in the morning. They usually do, and then we ran out of conversation. Then she suddenly said, look, you're spending a lot of money. Seems silly just sitting here. Why don't we go to bed? And she said, honestly, I don't mind. I, I looked at her and laughed. She laughed. 
It's all so absurd. And she came over and kissed me on the cheek and said, well, I'm going to bed. I sat around for about half an hour and followed her. I vaguely hoped that she'd be asleep. She wasn't. You didn't arrive until 11 o'clock the next morning. For all you knew, I might have arrived 10 minutes earlier. As it was, I'd been waiting hours, growing more and more nervous, angry. Afraid, I suppose, that you wouldn't come, because what was the point of the whole pathetic charade without you? But you arrived. Without apology, at 11 o'clock, most of your questions were directed at her. As you say, the machine's well-oiled. All the usual questions, the usual lies. You were there perhaps half an hour, that's all. Oh, you got your divorce, didn't you? You didn't come all this way just to say thanks. You're, you're not the type to expect gratitude. That's right. But the fee is, is the pay. Always the joke, Mr. Marker. No joke. And you don't feel a thing. Well, what should I feel? Ever. Or you'd be surprised. The day we met was the most important day of my life. I can remember every detail. You couldn't even remember my name. Yes, well, I'd like to say that you were special. Sorry, nothing like... Notes on a file. A file, ledger, a certificate. It's the same for all of us. After all, I wanted the divorce. You were only doing your job. Oh, good of you to understand. Oh, yes, I understand, Mr. Marker. What I wanted to make quite sure was that you did. Oh, yes, I understand. And now that I do, you can go away and quietly kill yourself. Well, that's the idea, isn't it? Did you think I'd forgotten? Oh, forget a name, perhaps a face, but never a threat. Especially a threat like that. I meant what I said. And I'm supposed to talk you out of it. That's what all this has been about, hmm? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. You've come to the wrong man. I'll tell you what, though. I've got a friend who's very good at this sort of thing. I'll give him a ring. Now, leave it alone. Look, I think the best I meant we can do... what I said. All right. Convince me. you'd been married? Nearly seven years. Seven years? My youngest boy was just four. I came home from work. She'd been drinking. There was never any drink in the house. The occasional bottle of sherry, perhaps. There was a half bottle of whiskey on the table. It was clearly positioned there for me to see. It looked so ridiculous, really. The children were in bed. She obviously was working herself up to say something to him, then it all flooded out. About a month before, she'd been picked up, literally picked up. They'd slept together, slept together several times in the mornings when the children were at school. He was an engineer or something from the Midlands. He'd, he was a married man, had gone home that morning. She told me she wanted to leave me. N not, not for him. She just wanted to get away from me, from, from the children, from whatever. I felt totally numb, not angry, not even shocked. She, she insulted me, she, she, she ridiculed me. Did everything she could, I suppose, to make me force the issue, but I, I couldn't. And she stayed. I suppose I hoped, but things became worse. All the time I believed, well, I, I had to believe that this terrible thing she was going through would pass, that because of the children, if nothing else, the children.
One night she came home with some man she'd picked up in a pub. He obviously expected to be living alone. She introduced me, forced him to sit in a chair and listen while she ran through her long and obscene list of what she'd done to me, why she despised me, why I was nothing. He sat there, half drunk, staring at his hands. I've never seen a man so ashamed. When she finished, she began to cry. He mumbled some sort of apology and left. You see, she said, you see. And you gave her grounds for divorce. <sighs> Oh, yes. Sure. <laughs> you don't believe it's possible? Oh, I believe it. You'd be surprised how many mugs I still meet who cross their fingers, hope that the meek will inherit the earth. Not in a divorce court, they don't. I didn't want to inherit the earth, just my children. She agreed to let you have the children? Yes. You put your head on the block. Surprise, surprise, she changes her mind. No kids. Don't you know how often they come down on the side of the mother? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. You I, had I a know specialist, I ought... didn't you? Yes. Well, one who specialised in divorce? No, not Ah, that. mistake number 94. If you're getting a divorce, get a divorce solicitor. This is an age of specialists, Mr. Clemens. Use them. Have you any idea just how difficult... You're right. You're absolutely right. It's finding the jokers. That's the problem. Knowing how to find them. That's a wicked old world, Mr. Clemens. But your wife seems to have made use of it. Haven't you? It's a crust. What I should have known, should have done, should have been told doesn't matter. My wife was given the children. I was given the privilege of seeing them at least once a week. You've no idea what it's like to be allowed to see your own children, the weekly outings, the overcompensating, the overindulgence, the desperate attempt to behave normally in a state of complete abnormality. My wife saw to it that I was given only my rights, no more, often less, often the excuse, the sudden illness, the sudden short holiday. Next week. Telephone next week. Last summer we came to Windsor, to the castle. They wanted to see the castle. It was then purely by accident that I saw you. Ah! Uh. <laughs> we came out of a cafe. We'd had tea, and there you were, driving into a garage not far from here. A green van, I seem to remember. Oh, yes, yes, I remember that. Terrible fierce clutch. I, I couldn't be sure. I waited until you'd gone. I asked the man in the garage. He told me, Frank Marker, inquiry agent. That's me. Well-known local character. But somehow we kept coming back here to, to the castle, to uh, the, the river. They seemed to enjoy it. But I knew I was coming because of you. I wanted to see you. I wanted you to see me. I wanted to see the look on your face. Oh, no, wait a minute, no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, 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 you see, there, there, was, there was something else, you see. I, I began to notice a, a change in her attitude towards me. It was slight at first. Then one Sunday, I took the boys back, and she asked me in. She seemed different. It was, it was like going back. Ten years. God knows what thoughts were running through my mind. She told me there was someone else. She was getting married again. I, I, I never thought of that. You see, it just silly. They w were married very soon. And I suppose that didn't improve things with the children. No, all the time. I, f I found myself coming here. All the time I found myself thinking more and more of what would happen if we did meet, if we did speak. It's stupid, ir ir irrational, I know, but it became an obsession. The more I worried about the children, and the more I wanted to see you, Marker, the private detective, the private executioner. Huh? Executioner? And what sort of crap is that? <laughs> you work out your little fantasies, but not at my expense, no, no, please. No, I'm sorry. Executioner. Yes, I'm... 
If you'd taken your I'm kids sorry. to Brighton, I'm it could have been sorry, the solicitor please, or Miss Lorna, Laura, or whatever her name was. Look, Chancellor Lane could have been the no. judge. Anyone. No, please, no listen, but you listen, had to come down to Windsor sorry. to look at the castle and you find me. Now, now there's fate, as they uh, say. One, 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 one weekend, I was due to take the boys away. They were ill. It was cancelled. Then next week, the same. And I, I didn't believe it. I went to the house. They tried to stop me going in, stop me seeing my own children. There was an, an argument. A neighbour, I think, called the police. Another set of cogs in the well-oiled machine. They've taken out an injunction. I'm to stay away. I'm no longer beneficial to my children. So, you see, when you officiated that little ceremony, you not only helped to destroy my marriage, you helped take away the one thing that was precious to me. Mm, not me. You, Mr. Marker. You see, tomorrow the case goes to court. They're finally going to take away the only thing I've got left. At least they, they want to. But I'm, I'm not going to let them, because if... If I can't have my children, no one shall So, You see, in doing... In helping to destroy my marriage, in... In doing your job, w without ever questioning why, you're really helping to destroy them. Right. I asked you to convince I'm me. I'm telling you... Oh, oh no, come you're con on now. You want me to suffer. That's what this is all about. All right, then I'll suffer. But let me get it quite straight. First, you're going to kill your two kids, and then you You find it hard to believe How can I find it hard to believe? And it happens every day of the week. But we're not only talking about suicide, are we? We're talking about murder. Uh, that wasn't your word, of course. What was the word you used? Destroy, wasn't it? Of course, you could have said put down, put to sleep even, put out of their misery. Or is it your misery? I'm not quite sure. How are you going to do it, by the way? Well, just as a matter of interest. Oh, is that what you got in the case? Gun, knife, poison. Sounds like something out of the theatre down the road, doesn't it? But of course, you're right, these things do happen. The most popular way, of course, is the car. Drive out to the country, bit of pipe on the end of the exhaust, good night, all, oh, no pain, no nothing. Oh, clever, clever, clever. Oh, no, I mean it. I mean, put yourself in my shoes. A bloke walks into your office, tells you he's going to kill his kids and do away with himself, and it's your fault. Now, what am I supposed to do? I'm not supposed to do anything. Oh, come on. Now, here's a man pouring his heart out to you, and you do nothing, and it's your fault. I never said that. I never said that. Oh, you can do better than that. Oh, what's all this been about? You're flat on your back? and you're looking for somewhere to put the blame, somebody in the system. Well, I'll tell you again. You've come to the wrong shop. Do you know just how many cases like yours I have to deal with? Hundreds! And I'll tell you this, Mr. Clemens, sir. I'm a very small fish in this particular pond, but I've seen things, heard things about people, just people, that would turn your stomach. But not mine, Mr. Clemens. Not mine. I do my work, I take my money, and I move on to the next file up, because there always is a next one. And, look, and don't think you're the first person that looked at me and wondered what sort of man does what I do. Do you want me to justify it? Go and ask the undertaker. Or the sewer man. Or the professional soldier. Or the dentist. Why he does it. Doesn't matter why, Mr. Clemens, you need us. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, I haven't finished. You had your say, now you just listen. You come in here, and you tell me some half-baked story, and I'm supposed to feel sorry for you because that's what you want. Pity. But you'll get no pity from me because there are one or two holes in that story. I told you the you truth. You told me only what you wanted to hear yourself. I saw your wife suddenly changed. Oh, was it her fault or yours? What did she get out of you? Maybe she got sick and tired of living with a man who makes a profession out of being a nobody, because that's what you do. You're sorry this and you're sorry that. Oh, that crap about the police throwing you out of the house and your wife taking out an injunction. If you get an injunction for that, you fight it. I'll bet even money that you pestered and whined and moaned and did everything you could to confuse those kids. You don't want them out of love, you want them out of hate. Well, I hope so. For your sake, I really hope so. You 
You, 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 you don't think I, I, I want... You want to what? Kill your kids? But listen to yourself. For God's sake, listen to yourself. You've never made a decision in your life. You expect me to believe you do that? If you're going to do it, you do it. You don't give advance warning unless you're shouting for help. But what do you want me to do? Call the police? Or better still, get in touch with your wife. Oh, yes, that would be good. A third party letting her know just how much you're suffering, perhaps, and she won't go to court tomorrow. Hey, get her on the phone. I'll do it now. Me, the Good Samaritan. Not a chance, brother. You want help, you go and see your doctor. Or your welfare officer, or your priest. Well, don't you come here threatening me with what you're going to do. This fish won't bite. You're wrong. Then I'll read about it in the papers, won't I? Can I go and get her? Yeah, I know. 
Remember me telling you about my oldest boy nagging the life out of me to lend him the deposit on a motorbike? Oh, yeah. Well, I hate the bloody things. But finally, I gave in. He gets himself one of these bloody great Japanese jobs. Right in the life out of me. Hello, Henry. All right? Yes, sir. This morning, he comes off it. Breaks his arm. My wife's playing blue murder with me. My fault. I should have stopped him. Shouldn't have given in. Me? I don't know. You can't do right for doing wrong. Half the time she's nagging you think I could change my mind? Yeah. Huh? Can I have a whiskey? Whiskey? Can I? Yeah. Thank you. 